you know, what about a long term yeah. business plan? Or what about what about maybe you grew and it came up hot and you're you're you destroyed the product according to what the rules are of the law. So now you need to grow a different one or it was outside the parameters or maybe there was a fungal pathogen or, you know, just because you had a fail on your grow doesn't mean you should be penalized. Yeah. So. All right. It shows we're live I there. We're, uh, I think we're live now. I hit the wrong button. That's all good. Um, <laughs> uh, welcome to the Growing with Fishes podcast uh, 184. Um, this week we have Josh Rutherford from the Regenerative Organic Cannabis Conference. How's it going, man? It's been a little while since you've been on. We've both been super busy. I've been over here on uh, the African continent and you guys have been rocking it over there at the conferences. How's it going? It's going good, man. Uh, I'm in sunny Colorado right now. So I can show you some mountains back there on the western slope. Getting uh, acclimated back to the to the climate. It's kind of funny. Um, I've been here for a week, and um, you know I used to climb mountains and be really comfortable at climbing. And so I live at sea level. This is like 5,500 square feet, and it took me till halfway through the week to just be like, oh, why am I so tired? Just like, you know, and then finally I realized, oh yeah, dude, you're not getting enough oxygen. <laughs> but, uh, so. Yeah, it takes a good month or two to get adjusted. I know when I first moved up to Colorado, uh, it took me a good probably three months before I finally felt normal again. But weed helps a lot for that. <laughs> How to weed. It's pretty dry out here. The climate's so dry, both in the winter and summer, that uh, it, it's really hard for stores to, and, and grows to keep their product moist apparently yeah you got to use those bag buddies at the higher uh, moisture contents helps mm -hmm. a little bit so yeah i'm excited them. for oh, so i was gonna say i'm excited humboldt's coming up um i spent all morning talking to the breeders and different folks that are coming and um it's really going to be a special special event they all are special but humboldt is a little more challenging in uh in design because it's a remote area out in the mountains and so there's just not a lot of facilities and services and renting chairs you have to bring them in and everything we have to bring in so um it's quite a logistical deal um, but but the culture is there and people are there um and it's uh everyone just comes out of the woodworks for this so it's going to be really exciting this year um, we have a lot of the same crew um, for the most part but we're kind of going into a different direction, going a little bit, as we've been saying, deeper down the rabbit hole. Um, so we asked, for instance, we've asked Chris, not asked, but talked with Chris, and he's going to go into IMO really deep this year. And it's, uh, in, in, in my opinion, and a lot of others, folks misunderstand Cana in that they get really excited about making all of the um, nutrients like the FPJ and FAA and, and, and labs and all these things. And the way we think about it and show teaches it in, in natural farming, uh, it's an 80-20 rule where 80% of, of the what you're applying is IMO, microorganisms, and then 20% is, is a nutrient boost. And so we want people to really understand because they, they're the biggest driving force of the whole system. And we want people to really understand that. And it, to understand it, it's really a, 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 a the tactile thing, you know, a touch, senses, you know, it's, it's like making bread. Um, you know, the, the, when the environment changes, your recipe has to change. I'm sorry. There we go. So that's what he's going to do. He's got local uh, soil smiths that are going to be making a bunch of IMO, good, bad, and, and, and all over the place and bringing it in so we can go deep on it. And yeah. Cool. And uh, so who are some of the other uh, speakers you guys got coming up for Humboldt? We uh, brought Chip back, Chip Osborne, who was there the first season. I think you might remember him. Um, it was a kind of a component that we feel uh, was missing from, from last year. He actually was not able to join us. He had a, a back, his back get thrown out. But he uh, talks soil chemistry and is really knowledgeable in how nutrients move through the soil and are transferred. And um, you know, every time I listen to him, I'm kind of getting it more. That's It's a really weak end of my knowledge, you know, as the kid's chemistry. and. I don't really quite understand it all. So, so it's helpful to have him just pound it into my head, you know? And then we got Suzanne Wainwright Evans, the bug lady. She's gonna come talk about aphids and uh, all the new stuff she's seeing. 
Um, she's been, go, you know, going to courses and continually educating herself. I'm always really impressed with her, um, her how she pushes herself and, and, and just tries to be, uh, you know, more service to us, us growers. It's, it's beautiful. And I really appreciate her. And then, of course, Josh and Kelly, Dragonfly Earth Medicine are coming in hard. Um, super appreciate them. They have so much going on with the, the Dempure Family uh, Collective. We're organizing um, new certifications, new uh, standards for, for breeding, for cultivation, indoor, grindoor, outdoor, sun-grown, um, processing. Um, yeah, there's so much going on. I, I'm, I don't even know all of what's going on. There's a lot of hands involved. And so really excited to, see, to hear them present to the community. Um, and then who am I missing? Leighton Morrison, obviously. He's going to do his thing and open us up on the Soil Food Web and uh, soil structure. And um, talk about Chris Trump, Shep. Wendy's gonna come on. Wendy um, Kornberg, she's gonna come and talk about um, Jadam pesticides, which is is interesting. We, we have uh, Suzanne come and talk about beneficial insects. And then we wanted to open up uh, to this Jadam uh, it, it, uh, I spray thing. You know, I, I'm not really comfortable with it or familiar with it. I got a lot of questions. Um, I've talked with Wendy about it, but uh, as an alternative, a lot of people struggled with aphids this year to the point where they weren't able to get control with their beneficial insects and, and people were resulting to using products that they don't want to use. And so I think this is, it's a tool. It's, it's an alternative tool that out there that, and it's really cheap. The, the, the base of the product is making Castile soap. And I think Wendy told me she made 50 gallons of like Castile soap, you know, it's similar to Dr. Bronner's for like 35 bucks. And, and so, she, you know, there's there's multiple benefits to a lot of these KNF uh, you know, things you make. So I'm excited to hear from her. And then uh, last but definitely not least, uh, Uncle Kev is going to talk about genetics, uh, marketing, and uh, how to stay alive in this challenging uh, you know industry that we're in. And it's, it's changing, evolving. And and then he'll follow up with a round of breeders. We have a lot of breeders coming this year. A um, couple duplicates. Jackson from Freeboard will be there. Um, we're bringing Kaya down from Pacific Northwest Roots. But then everyone else is, is almost brand new guys and, and well-known uh, folks. Um, you know, I can't even quote, quote the list. It's a big list. So I'm excited. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I think I'm actually going to talk too. Um, um, I'm going to talk about, in quotes, regenerative Grindor. And it's uh, similar to some of the stuff that you talked about, Steve, last year, and uh, things that you and I hash out, you know, late night conversations about how to, how to do greenhouse and make it really sustainable. Um, take it offline, tricks and, you know, a lot of the tricks that you talked about with um, storing heat underground and using aquaponic systems to create nutrients and, and bio and heat, and, uh, heat uh, storage, um, stuff like that. So I think it's uh, an important conversation to have. And um, I think that you made it really well, but a lot of folks focused on the aquaponics portion of what you were talking. And I feel like they kind of like, some folks got it, but some folks did it. And so I want to make that really clear. Like, you know, indoor is a thing, but we can do this greenhouse grindor thing and it can be really cheap and really like non not not impactful on the environment cool yeah we talked a little just touched a little bit on the uh, uh some of the green uh passive climate control stuff but uh, it's cool to see you flushing it out more yeah i'm just learning more about it too you know um it helps know, knowing guys like you that have calculated some of the numbers and have, can make it easy to put together, you know. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. It's cool you guys are, are keeping that up and working on that. Um, I experimented a little bit with some of the KNF um, insect stuff with doing um, insect frass and then spraying that with sugar water and kind of getting it like kind of soaked. In the, um, and then doing that kind of the way you would IMO collection and getting the microbes that feed on the shatan and then taking that as a foliar spray and, and using that as inoculant for, for a foliar spray and using that against grasshoppers. We had that against grasshoppers and then the um, uh, 
uh, caterpillars and that seemed to work pretty well. And I think we're going to definitely try that here in Africa um, as one of our, uh, you know, possible pest solutions because, uh, you know, those same microbes exist here. I'm sure they're vastly different species, but there are microbes in the environment that eat shatan from the insect skeletons that happen to just fall on the ground, right? So uh, there's no reason why we can't make them an ally. Are you able to harvest and make your own um, brass? Um, so we, I don't have any at the moment, but it's pretty widely available. They have a lot of organic inputs at the different um, nutrient depots here. They also, you can buy ammonium nitrate, 50 pounds a bag, which is something you definitely can't do at a hardware store in the U.S. <laughs> you have all kinds of fun. <laughs> I was like, I was explaining it to one of our coworkers. Like, oh, you'd never see that. I took a picture and I was laughing. He's like, what are you laughing? I was like, cause you can't do, you can't buy this in the States. I just... But, we'll blow ourselves up. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the um, you know it's funny trying to find like pest control options that are are available. That and we really weren't able to find much of any here that are actually <laughs> anything that would resemble something that's on a white list in the states. So we're gonna have to end up bringing in well, I, from South Africa. And depending and, upon how remote you are, I don't I don't really understand the situation. But if you're super remote, it might be really difficult to use beneficials. And especially well, so at thankfully, scale, you know. Thankfully, we're uh, only two hours away from Harare, so we can always drive back to the city if I need to, and have it just shipped to the main city and, and pick it up from the airport right away. And you know, so that's not a big deal. And South Africa has got really good trade relations, so and they have uh, agricultural agreements with a bunch of stuff. We can get stuff from BioBest actually. They have a South African production facility and a couple of other companies that you guys are actually familiar with in North America actually have facilities in South Africa now. Um, cool. for, for agricultural crops, mainly thanks to the wine industry. Um, but uh, um, uh, so we actually have a lot of the same tools. I was surprised to learn a lot of the same tools in my, my toolbox for, you know, different predators I actually have available from the same vendors, actually, <laughs> just a different location. So that was really surprising and, and really relieving. But probably the, the single biggest challenge wasn't new, finding organic nutrients, wasn't finding um, compost wasn't finding any of that stuff. It was just finding, uh, you know, proper beneficial insects and, and you know, you know, uh, different fungi or, you know, uh, what the hell is it called? Um, nematodes. Uh, nem yeah, nematodes and um, no, the, the spray fungus, um, Bessaria bavania and, and that types of stuff um, that we normally use as our toolbox and just trying to make sure I can replicate that as best as possible. <laughs> The only thing out here, there's two things that can come through like plagues that you guys don't have in the States. So we have army worms that can, they march across, they'll eat all the stuff nearby and then they'll kind of march along. And so that's something crazy. But I think if we got enough chickens or ducks, I think we could do all right. And then, uh, which is kind of uh, going to be eventually be part of the game plan for pest control is, is uh, which I love you have at your farm with the ducks like for slug control and stuff. We actually have giant uh, African snails here as well. The big giant ones you guys see as pets in the States once in a while, we have them here. So that's one of the problems we have to worry about as is it, well. Is it dry or, or, or humid there? So it's, it's comfortably humid. So I would say it's like 40% humidity where you're not getting dried out, that, you know, but it's not stifling. And then when it's going to rain and, you can kind of feel it coming. So it's kind of nice. And then in the winter time here, it gets down, you know, the average would be like 60 to 70 in the winter and then lows down into the upper forties or low fifties. So you can really kind of still even grow in the winter. Oh yeah. I just have to grow maybe more Canadian type cultivars or something a little more cold acclimatized. That's not going to freak out quite as much. Got you. But, uh, totally but yeah. Got you. But some of the sativas I found out here are incredible. I was telling you about this before we went on air, that uh, the um, the one sativa that we I've, I found out here is just woo, sky high and like just so much piney and it just shoots you to the moon. It's pretty wonderful. So yeah, that's that would that's something that just seems like really attractive to me. I've never liked you know tropical um, environments, Ecuadorian you know equatorial environments, but same time i haven't got to grow a lot of those plants and like really do that and um i think i would enjoy it for a minute you know oh yeah and it's just cool too seeing a couple of I had a chance to travel around a little bit i posted some pictures from swaziland 
And uh, it was pretty cool to see some different types of stuff. They weren't cool with video, but they let me take a couple pics. But uh, we'll we'll get back out there another time, and uh, we'll see if we can get some video. Cool. But um, but yeah, so we have some other stuff going on here before too long in South Africa, and a whole bunch of cool stuff. We'll have some more footage, and then uh, the farm should be rocking soon. We finally got our our seeds cleared through customs, so we'll which took entirely too long, but I know the process for shipping stuff damn near anywhere on the planet now. So if anyone ever has a question, feel free to hit me up in an email. Um, <laughs> Things um, you learn. Oh yeah. Uh, all the hoops and all the, you know, rings of fire and all the different things. So we got them through. So we'll be able to finally plant shit, hopefully by the end of the week uh, with the bulk of our stuff. So that'll cool. be good. At least the first test batch will go in the ground. So super excited about that and finally getting shit rolling well won't go on the ground it'll go into seed starts but same thing <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah will you do any direct planting direct planting um, into the soil uh, i don't trust we're gonna work on the soil like we've already done one application but we're gonna work on the soil in the next two weeks and we're gonna get the irrigation you know make sure everything's tweaked out with that and everything else and um that's mainly the biggest reason if the irrigation was all set i'd feel more comfortable doing it but we're still finalizing some of the irrigation so that's kind of where we're at the moment plus i frankly i don't know all the pests that i have to deal with here if i get right. them to like week two of germination and then put them out they got a hell of a lot better chance <laughs> so uh just as like a whole risk mitigation thing i think it's much better to uh you know just hold off just a little bit before we actually put them out so yeah, I actually lost about 1,200 some seeds this fall to roly polies. Um, <clears throat> planting direct in my beds that were just overloaded with roly polies. And uh, they like they didn't even come up, a lot of them. And I was like, what in the heck? And then finally some started coming up and getting chomped down. And then I finally caught on. And then I brought some, some baby plants in and they ate those up too, you know? And it was like, they're they're good you know they do a lot of beneficial things for the soil they're they're decomposers you know they're then they're there because there's so much organic matter you know and just like anything else too much of any one thing is a problem you know you can you can do a lot of things but like if you're trying to optimize need some predators in there yeah what are the predators though chickens right you know <laughs> chickens are here like maybe your ducks i don't know <laughs> But my chickens would eat my my cannabis, so I'm, I'm like, uh, ducks don't really care for them. Um, yeah, ducks are awesome for slug patrol. Oh yeah, they're killer for slugs. Yeah. But I hope I hopefully if I just let the beds sit, that's my plan. I have I put put more mature plants in there, and they're fine because the, the stems are hardier, and the roly polies aren't interested. Um, so hopefully they'll, they'll just kind of eat what's there and, and the natural cycle of their population will go down by spring. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes too, or it's, you get it super organic and you end up with uh, <laughs> some funky stuff. Um, that's all right. It all works out. Goldilocks. Yeah, is that oh. what it is? Goldilocks, not too much, not too little. Right. The... Um, the other thing is uh, we have warthogs occasionally we have to deal with, which is Whoa. so. So do you so. carry like a, a shot off shotgun on your side? No, no, but we could probably get one of the security guys to do some target practice <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just tell one of the, tell one of the locals to go grab dinner. You know. <laughs> you could be a big pig too. But uh, I think it, it's funny, some of the some of the towns, like uh, we have to drive through to get to the farm of American names and names of different states and stuff. It's pretty funny. I was like, what? How did, if we're in the middle of Zimbabwe, and this is like all American names. Like, what the heck? So it's pretty fun. But that and uh, just having to learn the different snakes and different things we have to do with that here. But super, super stoked to hear more about the conference. So what are some of the things that you... Uh, thought were super cool from the previous ones you guys you guys did vancouver already uh, what were some of the highlights of that one did i lose you i think he's having a connection issue or i am one or the other
All right, we'll get him back here in a minute. We'll give him a second. Um, yeah, I, um, if anyone's looking for um, aquaponic nutrients, definitely check out uh, True Aquaponics. Oh, looks like he lost connection here. We'll uh, we'll get him back in a second. I think his battery died. He was talking about being at twenty percent. We'll get him back on. Um, if you're interested, in, just in case he doesn't come back, be sure to check out their website for the conference. It's a really wonderful conference. I spoke at the first two years, but uh, I'm over here in Africa this year, so wasn't able to work out the logistics. It's a bit far. Uh, and I've done that run uh, four times this, this year, so uh, <laughs> it's a bit much. Um, but you can check them out over at regenerativeorganiccannabis.com. Uh, they have uh, Vancouver, Portland, Maine, and Michigan so far left. Um, I know the uh, Humboldt ones right at the end of the month, beginning of next month. Um, and you, again, check them out at regenerativeorganiccannabis.com. Um, wonderful list of people, Kevin Jodry. Um, Dragonfly Earth Medicine, Susan Wainwright Evans, probably the most knowledgeable person on cannabis insects on earth, in my opinion. Um, uh, Chris Trump, um, Josh, um, trying to think of who else. Um, um, yeah, he, he mentioned some of the other people. I'm, I'm just, sorry, a little, little, bit, uh, little bit buzzed tonight. So um, yeah, it was really cool to have them on. Loved to, uh, you know, wish I could make it, but I uh, wasn't able to make it out there this year. And um, yeah, I'm super, super excited that they're uh, continuing it on, spreading the, the good word. And if you're looking to really advance your, your grow game, definitely go check them out. It's a really wonderful event. So yeah, it's a, a really good thing and uh, you'll learn a hell of a lot of different cool stuff. So uh, I've been working out here in Africa, just getting our irrigation going and a whole bunch of hectares, which it's kind of fun to grow by the hectare. Haven't had a chance to do that before. Um, I was trying to learn from some of the local guys what are some of the different pests that they run into. They run into, uh, there's a nematode that occasionally attacks cannabis out here, I've been told, as long with a couple of mites that also attack it, um, uh, mostly just spider mites. Um, they haven't seen, or they weren't aware of russet mites. It doesn't mean they're not here, but they weren't aware of them. But then again, they you kind of need a loop or a microscope to see them anyway. Um, they did warn me about, you know, every once in maybe 20 or 30 years, I get a locust swarm that comes through and, and can wreck stuff, but not, it's not really something that's happened in a long time. Um, and then they have army worms that occasionally will go through their maize fields, but they haven't seen them plow through their cannabis, which the terpenes and stuff definitely make it less, less desirable, but who knows, you know, we'll have to deal with that if that ever comes, but hopefully we can just bring an army of chickens and ducks and deal with them that way. I'm sure russet mites are here somewhere, but we're going to hopefully uh, steer clear of that by, uh, you know, hopefully no one's mailing cuts to Zimbabwe, I hope. <laughs> but it wouldn't surprise me. Um, uh, yeah, other than that, um, just learning Shona. Um, the Shona word for cannabis is Majembe, which is like M-B-J-A-E, I think it is. Uh, Majembe, which is the, the Shona or Zimbabwe word for cannabis so that's been pretty cool um and then just uh trying to get everything going man testing the soil collecting imos um teaching the different guys how to run around and, and find imo um the downside here is where you would normally find imo is also where you're going to find puff adders so you kind of need a stick to poke around in front of you before you go romping off romping off into the leaf litter so you don't get bit but that's been uh, uh majembe m b a n j e Thank you, person in chat. Um, but uh, that's the Shona word. So uh, yeah, really fun. And then um, just trying to make sure we get everything you know sorted out in order, make sure we have all of our organic inputs for our different KNF ferments, FPJs. Uh, we do a bunch of stuff with kelp and spirulina and a bunch of other cool stuff and um, teaching them about labs, teaching them how to collect IMO. Um, we're going to be doing IMO two this week with them. So that'll be fun. Then IMO three once that's done. So, you know, so fun and so forth. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, the next one to two weeks, I'll be able to finally move into my new place. I think they got that most of the way sorted out, but, uh, they just need to paint it and I don't know what else is going on, but soon enough, we'll be over there. And then you guys will see the farm all the time. Instead, it'll be cool. I'll have a, a nice field of weed behind me. Um, Trying to think what else. 
other than that, just been just super busy getting our SOPs in order, um, trying to update some of our greenhouse stuff so we can start looking towards EU GMP and getting our greenhouses set up for that that are be set up here in a couple of months and uh, just prepping for all that stuff. It's a lot of extra paperwork on top of anything, you know, it's even worse than the Canadian stuff. If you've ever done a Canadian certification, it's even more complicated, so it's fun. Um, uh, but just working on that stuff, sitting in the garden, working on SOPs mostly uh, while we're getting the farm work or, uh, you know, getting the farm prep. One or the other basically has been my days. So thanks everybody uh, for joining us. Uh, I guess Josh is having some connection issues, but um, definitely check out the conference if you're anywhere near Redway or um, Portland, Maine or Michigan, check out the dates uh, appropriately uh, over at regeneratorganiccannabis.com. Um, we did have another guest that was supposed to be on the show. Uh, she was having internet issues. We decided to switch it. So we'll get her on in the future. Uh, trying to bring some more female guests on um, and uh, support the, you know, uh, support everybody a little more than uh, we have, in, not necessarily in the past, but just trying to, to make that known and get that out there and support everybody. So uh, we'll try and get some more awesome guests on. We have um, some really cool people. We're going to get the guys from Fish Shit on the show. They're going to come on. We have um, Symbiosid from Sweden, uh, Aquaponic Cannabis Company. And then next week we have, uh, is, we're, we're going to get them on the show. And then we have um, the African plant hunter. I've been talking to him. We're going to shoot a, we're just going to go shoot a, um, a non-live version together with me and him and uh, talk about uh, African plants and sit down together because we are close enough to do that. So that's going to be really cool because he's based in here in Zimbabwe. And uh, next week, we have Chief Cultivator from Habitat Life. They are the very first uh, medical aquaponic cannabis uh, cer organic certified facility in the whole world. Um, that's a medical aquaponic uh, cannabis facility and certified organic. So the uh, head cultivator for that, his name is Chief Cultivator on Instagram. He will be joining us as our guest next week, next Sunday on the show. So um yeah really looking forward to those and um you can check me out at potent ponics at youtube soundcloud itunes uh, spotify uh, i forgot that we were on spotify somebody asked me that yes we are on spotify um uh, i love iheart radio a uh, whole bunch of different places itunes all the different things uh, you can also find um, uh, josh at regenerative organic cannabis on youtube as well and um, yeah, thanks for him and putting that together and organizing the conference and uh, appreciate all he does and uh, trying to spread the education and, and everything else and everybody else that's a part of that team and, and keeps it going. So thanks a lot. And um, we'll be back again. Sorry for the shorter episode, but uh, just having a lot of technical difficulties. And uh, I don't know how much you guys want me to really to drone on about Africa at the moment before I can actually show you something, which I will be able to do here in a couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, just uh, hope to see you guys again. We'll be back again on Sunday with Chief Cultivator. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys again next week.